This video also concentrates on the theme of steady state offsets, but in this case looks at situations where the target is a ramp. We're going to assume that students by now are familiar with how to form steady state offsets for simple feedback loops like the one shown here. And the only difference between this video and the earlier videos is that now we're going to assume that r equals 1 over s squared. And you remember that previous videos used r equals 1 over s. So it's a very small change. We will ask the question, can the offset still be removed? That is, can this error signal here still go to zero or this output still track the reference r when r is a ramp. Here's a picture of a ramp then with this red line and you can see that clearly this signal is running off to infinity and the consequence of this is that if the output is to track the target it must also be going to infinity. So let's do a few examples. We could have an output that's trying to track it but not quite getting there but you notice it's still going off to infinity. I should mark here this time. And for instance, this could be y, this axis. We could have another signal where, for example, the error is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but you notice it's still going off to infinity. So the output's still diverging to infinity, even though the error's getting bigger. And we could also have something which does this and eventually actually tracks the relevant signal. But in all those cases, the output signal is going to infinity. Now, the final value theorem cannot be applied to ramps because there is no final value. The value is going off to infinity. It doesn't settle anywhere. And therefore, you cannot, in a straightforward manner, use the final value theorem to work out what's happening with the output. What do we need to do instead? We need to use the final value theorem on the error signal. Because what we're saying, oh, I can use some arrows here, is the error signal here, the difference between the output, oh, I don't know where those things have gone, sorry, the difference between the output and the target may still be finite even though the underlying signals are diverging to infinity. So we have to use the final value theorem on a signal which converges, and the error signal, hopefully anyway, will converge. So remind us then. So the offset is given by the steady state value e equals r minus y, and there's e in the loop. For a simple loop diagram, we can find this value using the final value theorem as follows, or rather just write the formula first. e equals 1 over 1 plus gm times r, where r is 1 over s squared. And then applying the final value theorem, you get the limit as t goes to infinity of e of t is the limit and I've forgotten to put that in here, sorry about that, so I'll write it here, the limit as s goes to 0 of s over 1 plus g0 m0, in fact it's all a bit sloppy, that should be g of s and that should be m of s times 1 over s squared. Let's have a look at what happens when we play with that formula. Now the first thing is we can reduce the formula to the following. Now what have I done there? You may have noticed on the previous slide we had an s in the numerator and an s squared in the denominator, so I've cancelled those two s's, and now I've got 1 over 1 plus g of s of ms times 1 over s. However, we're doing the limit as s goes to 0, and this is quite important, because that means I can reduce that thing in the blue box to just this. You might say, what have you done? We've removed the 1. Well, we're multiplying the whole of the denominator by s, and s is going to 0. So s times 1 goes to 0, so I can remove that term. But s times g of s, m of s, we're not quite sure what's happening, so we need to leave that term in for now. So you'll notice that subtle difference between offsets to ramps and offsets to set points. The formula is slightly different, because 1, we have this extra s in the denominator, which you didn't have with steps, and we also have removed the 1. Now, in order for the steady state error to go to 0, we need to get 0 from this formula. We need the limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over s, g of s, m of s needs to be 0. And for that to happen, we need the limit of s, g of s, m of s to be infinite. Let's look at an example then. Find the steady state offset to ramp gains for the following. And you'll see the uh, pair I've got, g of s is 
2 over s plus 1 and of s is s plus 5 over s plus 3 and I've given you the formula we're going to use. Now first of all the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s is going to be 2. The limit as s goes to 0 of m of s is going to be 5 over 3 and therefore the limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over s g of s m of s is going to be infinite because I've got 1 over s and s is going to 0 and both g and m give me finite numbers so what do you notice no integrator in the loop there's no integrator in g no integrator in m if I want to track a ramp then I can't I find that the error gets bigger and bigger and bigger the error goes off to infinity what about this example then find the steady state offset for the following system and again I've got the same formula now if I write out in full I've got the limit as s goes to 0 of 1 over and I've now got s times 2 over s s plus 1 s plus 4 that's the g of s and then 6 into s plus 3 over s plus 10 and in this case I've included an integrator in the process so I can cancel those two s's so that gets rid of the problem bit I can now let s go to 0 so the s plus 1 becomes 1 s plus 4 becomes 4 s plus 3 becomes 3 s plus 10 becomes 10 and what I get left with is 1 over 2 over 4 times 18 over 10 which gives me 40 over 36 or 10 over 9 so I've got an integrator in the loop but even though I've got an integrator in the loop I still get an offset to a ramp and you remember integrator in the loop you had no offset to a step but with a single integrator you still get an offset to a ramp and here is 10 over 9 here's a picture then to show you what the closed loop responses look like for this you'll see I've plotted, plotted the original ramp in red and the output response in blue and you won't be surprised to realize that the steady state offset marked here with these two this double sided arrow is 10 over 9 so I am following the ramp to some extent I've got the rank direction correct but I've got a steady state offset of 10 over 9 when I have just one integrator in the loop so how do I get rid of offset altogether? Well, the offset is given by this formula. The limit as s goes to 0 over 1 over s, g of s, m of s. And an offset of 0 therefore implies that I need this. The limit of s, g of s, m of s has to be infinity. And the only way I can make that happen is if g times m is something, I've called it here l, divided by s squared. Because that means that s, g, m it's going to become L over S and therefore the limit as S goes to 0 of L over S will be infinite so here's the conclusion the transfer, loop transfer function must include at least two integrators and you notice that's because of the S squared at least two integrators to remove the offset to a ramp here's an example then find the steady state offset to a ramp for the following system controller and you'll note I've got an integrator here and an integrator here so I've got two integrators so assuming I'm closed loop stable that's what that box says and I've checked that assuming I'm closed loop stable because I've got two integrators I will have no offset to a ramp and here's the plots and what do you notice the output converges to the ramp asymptotically the offset is zero so in conclusion for simple loop structures the system steady state offset to a unit ramp can be eliminated if between them the controller and the system include at least two integrators if you have only a single integrator the steady state error is finite and if you have no integrator the offset grows without bound a warning to finish though including two integrators will lead to poorly conditioned loops in general so I wouldn't recommend it if you can avoid it